Welcome to DIY Guitar Making and Eric Schaefer Guitars. Today we're going to talk about kerfing, specifically what types of clamps we should use. This, these, or these. Now before we even get started, if you're new to guitar building, that is if you're working on your first acoustic guitar build, I'm going to recommend that you use the first clamps that I'm going to talk about, which are these clothespins wrapped in rubber bands. They're cheap and they work well enough. In fact, it's what many serious guitar makers were using for decades and only recently have some viable alternatives come out. So if this is your first build, don't blow your budget on kerfing clamps. This video is more for experienced builders who recognize that at least some marginal improvement can be made in this area. So what is this marginal problem that I'm talking about? Well, these clothespin clamps, while they work well enough most of the time, in areas of the guitar's perimeter that have more of a curve, they don't quite have enough clamp force or evenness of the distribution of clamp force across the full width of the kerfing. So what you end up with are these little gaps at the back of the kerfing, especially at the waist and in cutaways, where the curvature is the greatest. Now your top is not going to fall off. This isn't really an issue of structural integrity because the gaps are small and they're not everywhere. So even if I used just the clothespin clamps, the kerfing would still be making good contact across most of its length and width. Again, builders have been using these clothespin clamps for decades with good results. And this is why this really shouldn't be a problem for you if you're a beginner, but really this is something for more obsessive, experienced individuals with perhaps a little too much time on their hands. So I purchased some of these fancy new clamps from Stumac that they're calling curved lining clamps. And I did find that they worked a little bit better. As you can see here, the shape of the jaws allows for better distribution across the full width of the kerfing. Now I say a little bit better because I still could not get a tight joint in the most extreme parts of the waist and cutaway which makes it a little hard to justify the astronomical cost of these clamps. Now there is one way to truly secure the most extreme parts of the waist and cutaway, and that's with the good old fashioned, tried and true C-clamp. Now there are two issues with the C-clamp. One, you need to use a call on the outside so you don't leave a nasty compression mark on your beautiful sides. I like to use small offcuts of the kerfing itself since it is flexible and will bend with the sides. And two, you can't use these everywhere because these clamps take up a lot of space and tend to get in the way of each other. You can alternate the direction of the lever, but you're still not going to be able to fit them all across everywhere. But that's all right because you don't have to. The best solution here, I think, is to use the clothespins or the kerfed lining clamps in most places and then use only the mini C clamps only in those areas where it's really needed. And that's how I get a tight joint all the way around the kerfing. And again, this is not for structural reasons. This is simply to get a better fit and avoid unnecessary gaps and hopefully get some better harmonic coupling in the process, however slight that might be. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.